Hi, everybody. Good afternoon here on the West Coast. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Margaret Pernard. Welcome to my channel. You're on BookTube. And have I got a treat for you today. So I'm back from the trip, but I'm in another new location. As you can see, it's very, it's very white behind me. <laughs> So I am in a new location and that is in Northern California. Hi, Northern California. Hope you're doing okay. It's a beautiful sunny day. Um, but what I'm going to be reporting on today is the books that I got while on my trip to London and Glasgow and Ardrossan. So I've got the bag. It's a Powell's bag, which is funny. That will come up later. I will highlight that part part of the story later. Um, but also uh, part of my family is leaving for the airport right now. So there's like kerfuffle behind, but hopefully that's okay with everybody. So uh, if you're new here, I'm Margaret. Welcome to the channel. I am a historical fiction and fantasy writer and an eclectic reader. So what you will get in the book haul is going to be a mishmash. I love the eclectic reader tag. I own it. So hopefully you'll be in for whatever I pull out of that bag, right? And there will also be a little mini stationary haul at the end because I couldn't resist. So um, I did have a piece to put in the chat if anyone wants to fill this in. Oh, it didn't take my little emoji. Okay, that's one of my channel emojis, which I just put in. But fill in the blank. Bookshops are my blank. And I'll come back to that later because I have an answer, but yours may be different. Um, so hello, Shannon. Shannon is here. Oh boy, we have an answer. Bookshops are my past. I don't remember the last time I entered a bookshop. I rarely go in public for anything other than gym appointments and kiddo stuff. Oh, that's that bookshops are life to me. So ugh, I don't know if I could tear myself away. You're stronger than I am. Tammy Esposito. Hello. Hello. Yes. Okay, good. You can see the channel emoji. All right, just that StreamYard doesn't know it. Okay, so we're gonna launch into the first lot. So basically this is like, I went into bookshops wherever I went, right? And I landed in London, I, um, it was the afternoon, I think. I went to the hotel, dropped my stuff and I was going to meet a booktuber, but she wasn't up to it. She didn't feel well that day. So I went to Words on the Water, the book barge by myself that was by, uh, Houston station on the canal and it was very cute. The owner was there. An author was there. They had a great setup. Um, it was very cozy and sort of cluttery on this book barge in the water, which was very unique. They had musician stuff on top to play, to have music, but it was pouring down and it was freezing rain so it was not enjoyable to be out and i'm glad katya didn't go out that day because it would have been miserable but it was nice and cozy because the barge actually has a like wood fireplace i don't think it was gas a wood fired fireplace on the boat at the back so like you make your way through the little narrow boat lots of books one thing I noticed that is different about several of the bookshops I went to in London is that they had repeat books. So I'm used to, if you have a book, it's got one place it's supposed to be and all the copies of the book are in that place. So you'll see three copies of Great Expectations, for example. But on this well-curated, well-spread-out, very interesting, modern, contemporary, some literary classics book barge, they had... Um, you know, uh, who is the Irish author I was thinking of reading? One of the Irish women authors on my list. She was here, and then a few feet later, she was over here, and then she was on a different kind of display. So, very cool. But I did not getting, I did not end up getting books there. So that is not lot number one. Lot number one is going to be the third place I went. So on my way back. And I, and I'm failing at my first effort here. Um, I think it was Jack who sent me the link of bookshops in London. But I'm not sure. I looked at Instagram. I looked at my Google Maps, and now I can't tell who sent me the map of the bookshops in London. Whoever it was, if it was Jack or Gemma, um, 
they shared uh, bookshops in London. And that is how I found out about Scoob Books, which is billed as um, popular and academic. And I was like, ooh, my antennas are up. So this is the first lot of books I got. And I tried not to get too many at once in one place because then you have regret you know, for that one place and not getting something somewhere else. So I tried to s distribute and parcel out my, my largesse as it, as it were. Okay. So these are the academic books that I found that I'm very excited about. So one is the invention of tradition edited by Eric Hobsbawm and Terrence Ranger. As you can see, it's going to be about history. You've got Queen Victoria over here and you've got a guy in a kilt over here. So I found this because I was looking for Hobbsbaum. He's a historian, um, British person who does a lot of interesting stuff between the Victorian period and the one preceding and the sort of meta history topics. And this, what I think it's going to be about based on the title, is the sort of recreated past of British history. So once they've come through all these very difficult sort of um, nationalization efforts and now they're the united kingdom and there's the empire and everything there was an effort to either intentionally or accidentally uh color the past in a certain way so that they could feel good about themselves as an empire as a ruler and you know scotland had some interesting changes in that period and because of that recoloring of the past. So I'm very excited to read this and get more Hobbsbaum and more about Scotland in the Victorian period. Okay, we're going to have a big stack here, so I just got to keep going. Then I also found Chartism, third edition by Edward Royal. This is part of a seminar series in history by Longman, so definitely an academic, academic publisher. And this is one of the social movements. It's for labor rights and basically human rights um, in the 1830s and 40s. And that is the period I'm writing about in my work in progress. So I was very excited to get like a little primer and have it be like British point of view because they will assume different things than I will get on, for example, Wikipedia or academic articles that I've accessed through the library. So very excited. Oh, I see Richard's popped in. Hello, hello. I don't know, Richard, have you ever been to Scoob Books? It's awesome. I really enjoyed it. The last find I had at Scoob was called Insurrection, Scotland's Famine Winter by James Hunter. And James Hunter is another name I know from before. He's a popular history writer. Um, and this, I think... Yes, it's nonfiction. It looks like it could be fiction, right? It's very exciting. I love this cover. So basically, when we think about the famine, we only think about Ireland. But as I have illustrated in my books, um, there was also uh, social change and famine and, you know, people being put out on the road, being homeless in Scotland in this period and immediately proceeding. So this is an interesting examination of uh, time period, I think it's a little before, um, let's see, 1846. It's a little after where I think I'm going to be setting my first book and second book. Um, maybe this will be more for the third in the series. We'll see. But very excited to make that find. And this is a used bookstore, so it wasn't an arm and a leg. So I was very happy. Okay, so that is lot number one at the auction at Sotheby's, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so let me check back in. Um, Leslie's here to say hello. Happy Sunday. Eloise, hello. Happy Sunday and gave that like button a high five. Thank you, friend. And I don't know what that means, Richard, but I'm glad you're here. <laughs> okay, this is as far as I got on my outline because of all the family rushing around. So now we're just flying by the seat of our pants. I should feel perfectly fine with that, right? So let's see the next lot, lot number two. I'll just write this down for posterity. Lot number two. Um, they're from Waterstones. I can tell because I have a buy one, get one half price. Um, oh, I know. This is the Waterstones in Glasgow. Okay, so the next leg of the trip. I was in London for a night, took the train up to Glasgow, went right through, took another train down to Ardrosan. 
visited a museum, visited the sea, visited the, the three tombs in Ardrosan, Stevenston, and Saltcoats. Um, saw some interesting things. No bookstores there, but the museum where I did get books. Um, but they're pamphlets. So we'll cover that when we talk about the museum and the museum vlogs. So stay tuned for that. So the next one is after I came back from the seaside, where it was beautifully sunny, and I was back in Glasgow for a couple nights, and I met up with some lovely booktubers, which will also be a lovely vlog coming in, so stay tuned for that. And um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Sandra's vlog is up today, so definitely go see that. Her channel is called Pull Down the Moon, and she just did a vlog of the last few weeks of her life, including the booktuber meetup at Waterstones on Sashi Hall Street. Saki Hall Street? I'm not sure how to say it. Um, but it was a, you know, multi-story, has a cafe, like, oh, has an art section, has a puzzle section. Beautiful bookstore. Recommend it. Waterstones in Glasgow. And um, Sandra was there and uh, Hasty Back channel. Um, now I'm going to blank on the name. Because <laughs> it's Instagram is Kamina and I just saw the chat on Instagram. Um, I'm sorry. I'm trying to remember all these things at once and now like things are slipping out. And also Heather Gregg from their Craig's channel. And so the four of us met up and we met at the cafe. So in order to get a free coffee at the cafe, I had to buy a book and it turned out to be this one. Um, it's one of their book club picks. So Eleanor Catton's Burnham Wood. Eleanor Catton wrote The Luminaries, which I did really love. I've got a buddy read on that um, on my channel. And so this is her latest work after much fallow period, Burnham Wood, which is a reference to Shakespeare. So I'm included already. And I just thought it would be a good read. I'm sure she's going to do something marvelous and enthralling and I'll love it. So picked up that to have my coffee and we had a lovely chat. So you'll probably see some of that in Sandra's video. And, um, then when I was left to my own devices after they left, I got a couple more. I got God Mission Park by Jill Hornby because I loved her Miss Austin, which was a fictional reimagining of Cassandra Austin after Jane has died and what her life is like reflecting back. Um, and God Mission Park is a actual place in Jane Austen's life, but I think she's turned it into a sort of different tale with sort of secondary characters that were real. So I'm very excited about this. So I got that and the buy one half one price enabled me to get my last Irish readathon read out of that list that I was wondering which one to try. So I got Trespasses by Louise Kennedy at the Waterstones in Glasgow. Buy one, get one half price. And you better believe I did finally sign up for the Waterstones loyalty card because I was spending a bit of money there. You'll see. You'll see in lots three and four. Okay. So that's two down, three to go. Um, let's see what we got here. Camilla. I was thinking Camina, and I Camilla, I haste you back. Thank you. Um, we've got a JC in the house. Nice. Oh, we've got some other people popping in. I just missed a whole bunch. Okay. Um, we're saying hey, Jim is here, even though it's late. Hey Jim, how you doing? I saw multiple references to Slough when I was in London this time. And I was like, ping, ping, every time I was thinking of you. It's <laughs> just great. Um, Devin Gabriel clark hello, hello. The AWC represent, way to go. Nice to see you guys. Deborah Carr, my father-in-law was from Glasgow. And now you're in the Jersey Islands. Yeah, we never know where we'll end up. That's lovely. It's a lovely place. I really like visiting. Uh, JC is here in the house saying hello. And everyone's saying hello right back. So that's wonderful. Uh, we're feeling behind for the year. Yes, I think that's that's pretty standard. <laughs> JC says, Shannon, if you were behind, then none of us stand a chance. Yeah, LOL. Truth, truth, yeah. I picked up a library of books. Yeah, we're six books in, and that's lot number two for the people in the um, auction paying attention. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Devin is sneaky. Yeah. Welcome. 
Okay. So let me hop back in. Um, so that was Waterstones with the Booktuber meetup, which we'll be having a vlog about. So we've got four videos rolling out. I, I have four videos planned about the trip and I'm going to try to stick to the, the matter in each one so that I don't repeat myself too much for people watching. Also, just a side note, I am 52 hours away from monetization. 52 people. I'm so close. It's very exciting. It's very exciting here. All right, let's continue. So, when I came back, when I came back, um, I think this is what happened. Yes, I was in Glasgow after the meetup. I was on my own reconnaissance, found myself at another bookstore. Here's what happened. Actually, I did a lot of research to find out where I wanted to go on this trip. And one of the places was Pollock Shields, Pollock Shaw's, I wasn't sure which. This is actually a brochure in real life that is online as a PDF. And it's the Pollock Shaw's Heritage Trail. Um, one of the sort of sneaky ways I try to do research is to find small local historical associations that do things like this. Some of them even have apps where you can download an app and it'll tell you like where you go landmark to landmark. It's very fun and very enterprising. I commend them. So this one, I went to the library to ask if they had the brochure. They did. So I could actually look at it while I was walking instead of have my laptop out. And, um, they said they had a specific book that gave a lot more information about the different places on their trails. And it was available for 12 pounds at Stephen O'Neill's shop on whatever street. Guess who betook herself to Stephen O'Neill's shop on whatever street. And apparently he's like famous. Sanders said he's like a very well-known artist and he's been around for like 30 years, which is really cool. So I went into his shop and I found not only the 12 pound book, with the South Glasgow Heritage Trails, a guide, which is beautiful. It's got like lots of pictures, addresses, dates, names, like, ah, oh, it's catnip. It also had this, which is a new place I learned about. So the Strathbungo Handbook, and this is sort of like how the community came together to become sort of a historical preservation preservation district. And I'd never heard of Strathbungo before. It's sort of a funny name. It caught my ear and it's sort of like a micro neighborhood, like a very small slice so it's defined, um, maybe like Tribeca in New York or smaller. And it was like how the community got together. So it has interesting little details in there as well. So I picked up these two there and so in the stationery, I will show you later, but, um, Stephen O'Neill's there's the address, stephenoneal.co.uk. He was lovely. Oh, I added an elf. I misspelled it in the tags. Okay. He was lovely and we chatted about architecture history. Uh, apparently he does architecture runs in summer, which is very unique. I'd never heard this before. They pick different landmarks and run from one, two, three, four. And like, that's the run. You're not going to catch me running in Glasgow in the summer, but it's a great idea. It's a great idea for runners. So that's, that's the third one at the Glasgow mark. How we doing? How we doing? <laughs> All right. So then I've got three more lots. So the next, um, is, I think this is another water stones. I think this is the one that was closer to my hotel. Maybe this is the one close to the hotel in London. Anyway, I went to a, a lot of Waterstones. Um, but we'll have one different bookstore. My favorite one is the last one. So, yeah. But here's where I found something different. Like, I don't see these in American bookstores. So, we know Robin Wall Kimmerer is one of my favorite authors. Nonfiction, scientist, indigenous, lovely with words, very empathetic. This is a little penguin booklet called The Democracy of Species. And I looked and I think it's going to be like an essay. Um, yeah, just like a neat nature essay about being a citizen of the earth and taking care of it. And I was like, oh, another opportunity to buy something from Robin Wall Kimmerer. Yes, please. Then I got another classic that's on my list. Angela Y. Davis, Women, Race, and Class. Another penguin classic. 
is a different cover than I'd seen before. So sometimes when I go to these bookshops, I look specifically for things that I can't find in the US, or sometimes I'm just looking for things that are on my wish list. Um, and this is definitely on that. And, you know, it was a good price. And I thought, hell, perfect. I like when I can get books at places and remember that this is a book I bought on a trip and it just gives me warm fuzzies. And the final one there is another Irish author. So Monica Dickens, this is older. This isn't um, contemporary. Let's see when this book is from. Oh no, wait. Yeah, 1951. So it's, it's historic. Um, but it is contemporary fiction from 1951. Monica Dickens, My Turn to Make the Tea. So I figure this will be a bit different. I have a different book of hers, uh, One Pair of Hands, on my wish list that I really wanted to read. And I couldn't find it. So this is what they had by Monica Dickens. So I figured I'd get a piece of her style. And, um, oh, it's a Virago mo modern classic, but it's a different cover that I'm used to, the old ones. But on the back, it says another Virago modern classic is Monica Dickens' One Pair of Feet. She didn't even know. Like, that must be related to One Pair of Hands. So that is lot number three, the Little Waterstones. Three, four. That's four. <laughs> um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Devin says, I'm adding to my TBR. The summer is going to be great. Awesome. Leslie <laughs> says, hell yes, 52. It's like every morning I check and it's like a little bit closer. Everyone binge Margaret's videos. <laughs> Just push me over that finish line. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That is the perfect idea, JC. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Uh, great minds think alike. Let's see. Devin's got a playlist running in the background on mute. Oh, you guys are so sweet. And JC says, I heard stationary. Yes, it's small, but it, it'll be at the end. Um, Leslie says, I like the cover for Monica Dickens' book. Yeah, the graphic interface is very cool. And Jim says, I've only read The Listeners by Monica Dickens about a suicide hotline. It was very good. Ooh, okay. Um yeah, I because the last five days have been an eleven-hour car ride with the with the beanster, and then family time when all of us are here. Like I have not had any time to do any reading except like two mornings for about half an hour. So the Irish readathon is starting very slowly for me, but the family time is awesome. And the book that I've been reading in the mornings is the um, is a research book. It's like Greville's memoirs from 1840, 1838. So. Sorry, Leslie. I did listen to a little bit more in the car, but the, the, the ha between the houses is an only a 10 minute drive. So I'm not getting very far on the reformatory, but I'll get there. Um, yes. And JC says, I love that you introduce me to authors and books I've never heard of before. Yes. <laughs> queen, queen of books you've never heard before. <laughs> okay. So moving on to um, number five, lot number five. So this is the really cool part. And you'll see this in the bookshop vlog because I had took a lot of pictures and some video. Um, but the last bookstore that I went to was the morning of my flight. And I was out in the morning before I had to check out. They didn't get me breakfast. It wasn't a great place. <laughs> so I won't mention it. But um, it was close to close enough to John Books. And I've heard of Daunt Books because James Daunt, the person who started it 40, 30 years ago, is now, I think, the CEO of Barnes & Noble because he was brought on to do something with the chain so it wouldn't collapse, right? And I don't, I haven't kept up with that story. I think, you know, Barnes & Noble is still around. I think they've gone with the strategy of trying to be local and offer different things to their local areas so they can differentiate themselves, which I think is smart. But other than that, I don't know. So I don't know much about James Daunt, except that he's taken on a big task. But holy Moses, his bookstore in London, Daunt Books, is beautiful. 
So if you see those pictures on Instagram where it's like gleaming wooden rails and like the spiral staircase for the second level, that is what we're talking about. So I went there and was like, oh crap, I don't have enough time to go through this like I want to, which would be all day. But, um, you know, I had like less than an hour. So I went through, I, I looked at the literary fiction, I looked at the paperbacks, I looked at the travel, I looked at, you know, their main sort of face out things. And then the back room, I saw they had um, literature by geography. And I was like, oh dear, we're in trouble now. So that's where I spent the bulk of my time and money. I went up a little staircase to the British section and I found three books that I got. Three books at the place is kind of my, my max. The first one is On Foot Through Clydesdale by Ian C. Lees. And I loved the cover, sort of a woodcut illustration. And I expect this to be travel literature. It's, I mean, you can tell by the type that it's historical. Let's see how historical it is. Oh, Dot Books for Travelers. It is 30s. Yeah, first published in 1932 by Blackie and Son Limited. So I'm looking for this to be like, how were things in the neighborhood in 1932? I love knowing about like maps and like daily slice of life from earlier eras. So there's there's something in a 1932 era that I'm like filing things away in. And Clydesdale is like the River Clyde. Clyde built ships. It's around Glasgow. I'm not sure if he goes all the way from the source to the sea or or what, but it, I, it's a small little book and it looked delightful. So I was sold pretty easy. Then I've got the Lowland Clearances, Scotland's Silent Revolution, 1760 to 1830 by Peter Aitchison and Andrew Cassell. I think it's a French name. But um, this is also a smallish book, medium size. And I'm interested in this because I ignored it before. So when I wrote my trilogy, it was about, um, it was based on information about the highlands and islands. So that was basically like saying the Northwest Territories of Cal Canada, right? It's like this enormous territory that just gets lumped together because it's too far and people don't want to bring them into civil administration and they're backwards and they don't know what they're doing and, or whatever. I don't know if the Northwest Territories is like that, but um, in Scotland in the 19th century and 18th, um, that's what I wanted to highlight. But what's lesser known is lowland clearances because they rolled out a bit differently and when i say clearances if you haven't read my book what that means is like people being thrown out of their homes because they couldn't pay their rent um on purpose because people wanted to bring in something more profitable than tenants like sheep so that's the classical story but it rolls out in a lot of different ways in different places and some landlords are better than others um, so I'm very curious to hear the lowland experience and what's different about it. Cause now I've got a little bit of grounding and I can compare the history. So that was a very exciting. Then I'll get more info on Glasgow too, in that time period by 1830. And then finally, I have the book that I've already read because I couldn't stop from reading it on the plane. And then I couldn't stop from reading it when I got home. So I had a few days rest in Portland before I drove down south to California. And that is this book called Mr. Atkinson's Rum Contract, the story of a tangled inheritance by Richard Atkinson. And it's got sort of like frilly font and not much to the cover. But what caught my eye was the rum contract part because um, basically this is a modern person. So this is published in 2020. He took about 10 plus years to write the book. But he was um, one of the members of the British families that used to be aristocrats and are now like just working at nine to five office jobs like most other people. And so he knew about some family history that used to, he grew up, he grew up? No, he didn't grow up in a castle, but he visited his grandparents in a castle that was falling down. Classic, um, well, I can't think of the British series that did that, but um Yes, Falling Down Castle, British aristocracy, and the Atkinsons got rich 
on rum contracts. They were government contractors in the time of slavery. So they had plantations, they had slaves, and they were involved in the whole Jamaica trade. So this is someone modern who saw some letters from the 18th century, like, like primary source stuff, saw a cookbook, visited a couple places, and was like drawn in to learn about it, and then wanted to put it all out there so people could see what his family had done, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I thought that is really unique. That is like a specific type of personality who wants to find out what happened, even if it reflects badly on their family, because that's history and people need to know about it so that they don't fall into the same way of thinking, I would say. So that's my opinion. I'm really interested. I wish he was on social media. He is not. He's a book publisher of cookbooks. So maybe he's gone back to that. I don't know. But I was really drawn in because it's sort of like an adventure story at the beginning where he's trying to find out this thread. Is it this person? Is it this Matt? Is it this Matthew? Are these the same person? And then you get into the politics and parliament at the end of the 18th century. And then the war with America and the war of independence for us and like the taxes and the government contracting, which you might think is boring, but not to me. <laughs> he makes it pretty exciting. I mean, I was more interested in his discovery of the past than his description of the things in the past. So it slowed down a little for me. And then towards the end, when he was connecting with further generations, and he had some like really interesting moments when he talked about um, being on either Ancestry or 23andMe and like finding other people, but you know, not being sure how they would react to him reaching out and like all these things like wrestling with history i just thought it was so cool that it exists and that someone did that like i want to do that but i don't have any 18th century documents lying around <laughs> so i this isn't a book review but it sort of is and getting mixed in with the book haul so sorry i will roll it back roll it back um let me catch up with the chat because i saw <laughs> i saw stuff come in um Leslie graciously says, take your time with the reformatory. I will get it as soon as I go down to slow, but now I'm not going down to slow until Friday. So, um, uh, JC says, wish they would have brought him on to help borders before they went out of business. I miss borders. Uh, they had, I mean, Barnes Noble has a lot of what borders used to have that they didn't. They sort of like, you know, welcomed them into the fold, the stickers and like all that stuff. It's fun. Uh, yes, Devin misses Borders too. Steph says, hi. <laughs> hi, lovely. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, Jocelyn, happy Sunday. Sprint hopping and giving a like. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Um, Andy is here giving a wave. Hello, hello. Going to binge watch some of Margaret's content today. Someone was looking at the chat up there. I see it. I see it. And we see Andy, and he's doing some stream hopping. Yes, as he runs his own stream. Excellent. Oh, JC says, I'm not a Barnes & Nobles fan. Just doesn't have the same welcoming feel that Borders did. See, and I felt the opposite. I would go into Borders, and I would feel it was so cookie cutter. And like, like Tower Records, like the same font as Tower Records, and I never got into Tower. I don't know if that was out in your region. But Barnes & Noble was the one that came to my downtown. So it always felt like, you know, it had Starbucks. And it was where we congregated as teenagers. It was like, not the cool place to be, but obviously the only place I was going to be. <laughs> right next to the movie theater. So yeah, so that's lot number five. Which means it's time for the stationery hall. So it's it's not much it's just a mini one again i needed the room for books but um in don't books there's this unique thing so it says pigeon this is the name of the company um the letter reinvented and basically it's pieces of paper that are um cut out so that you can fold them into an envelope when you write on the inside like people used to do when there weren't envelopes and little stickers for um closing them and i thought that was just really cute and like they had lots of different designs but i liked this one so i figured i'd get it um i do like sending mail postcards to patrons i got some postcards not very many because i didn't find them till the end and i already mailed people like 
letters from the place and then some like cute british themed uh well one is cat themed <laughs> couldn't resist and one is british themed it's like got like shoes and i don't know it just looked cute and academic and silly so that's some of the stationery stuff i picked up that you may find in your mailbox you don't know maybe maybe not and um, some of those I found from stephenoneal.co.uk. So I went with a half full suitcase and I came back. I didn't weigh the 50 full pounds that I was allotted, but the suitcase was much heavier. And um, I was very happy with that because that's sort of the point is that I go, I see things that I can't see at home and I find books that I can't find at home and... That makes me happy because then I'm getting more well-rounded views of research for the book and like literature. Uh, I could probably find trespasses at a Barnes and Noble, but I like finding it out in the wild. <laughs> so that is my great British book haul um, and my teeny weeny stationery haul. So now I have two things to tell you about that are coming up this week. And that'll be us today. Oh boy. JC says, I remember Tower Records. I know, we're so old. We're so old. Steph says, I get the feeling of for or against Barnes & Noble indie bookstores for the win, though. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Daunt Books, the favorite of the whole bunch if you're in London. Yay, stationery. Um, Devin says... Barnes & Noble is less than 10 minutes from my house, but Books A Million has my heart. Oh, Books A Million! I remember the Books A Million in, in DuPont Circle. Yeah, that was the days. That was the days. That's cute. That's neat. I know. Like, cute little cards. Um, oh, really? After they closed. They closed down a whole bunch, but um, yeah. Deborah says, love the stationery, love the cat card, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I know, I know. Who's it by? I don't know if it's available anywhere closer. It says, printed in rural England on 100% recycled paper by www.archivistgallery.com. Charlotte Farmer. Yeah, so it's one of those like special ones, but is cute. So I have to send it to a cat person. Yeah, we are seasoned. Oh, I like that. I like that, Jason. <laughs> oh, no. Shannon doesn't have any big bookstores near her. 45 minutes. Not that I go. Well, that would be a reason not to go. I sort of understand it a little more now. It's kind of a trek. Yeah. Yeah. So what is coming up this week? So normally my videos are Sundays at noon, Wednesdays at noon. Wednesday is going to be at 1 p.m. because a mighty blaze going to be sort of taking over so wrong one uh wednesday i'm going to be interviewing an author for a mighty blaze natasha pulley who wrote the mars house and this is my arc copy i really loved it i didn't know if i would because it's like sci-fi sort of but like also like her other books so it's kind of like um jim's one of jim's favorite authors emily saint saint something mandel um and that she changes genres but like the feel is the same and so you like you can follow her and still love what she's writing about which is great so i read the bedlam stacks by natasha pulley and then saw that she was interested in coming on a mighty blaze and i was like ooh, ooh i'll interview her so this will be wednesday at 1 p.m pacific 4 p.m eastern she'll be on my channel as well as a mighty blaze and the mars house is about seven or eight generations into a colony on Mars. And you've got people who have been there for seven or eight generations and they have become an elite and they look different and have different adaptations to the environment. And then you've got people who are fleeing Earth much later as sort of refugees who are still uh, looking like Earth humans and disadvantaged in some ways. And then there's politics and then there's a love story and then there's secrets like it's full of so many good things and like magic so like what's not to love so that'll be wednesday at 1 p.m pacific 
And then another special time um, for A Mighty Blaze, I will be interviewing the author and translator. So I've got two folks of Welcome to the Hunan Dong Bookshop by Huang Borum. And the translator is Shanna Tan. So Borum lives in Seoul and Shanna lives in Singapore, I believe. So we had to get a crazy time to be able to accommodate everybody. And for us in Pacific time, that's going to be 8 p.m. And we might start a few minutes early because I want to get as much time as I can with them. The Hunam Dong Bookshop is uh, built as a slice of life um, book about someone in midlife starting a bookstore in Seoul and like the things that she's considering. I would call it a midlife sort of coming of age. I love the cast of characters. I love the deep, like, interior thinking. I love the calm approach to conflict and, you know, people overcoming things in their own way. And I'm very excited to be able to talk to the author and translator, translated literary fiction. So, and it's set in a bookshop. So what more could you want again? So that is Thursday, 8 p.m. Pacific. And Leslie's going to be my fan or she's going to be helping behind the scenes, which I'm very excited about. Yay. Um, I think that is all the updates. I think that is all the bookshop haul. Oh, I didn't even ask for this, but when I left Daunt Books, they gave me a, a tote. So there's the address if you want to run out and see the bookstore. <laughs> um I, I think I spent just over 30 pounds. So I think that was probably like the threshold, but that was a nice little surprise. So, so it was a lovely trip. I met some lovely people and you'll find out about the bookshops and the people and the research in my three videos to come. They won't be this week because I've got all the interviews go going on. But after that, when I'm a little more settled, <laughs> we'll be revisiting more, um, report outs from the UK trip. And it was really, really fun, but too, too fast. So I've, I've got to relive it to make it, you know, make it even better. Um, so JC says, very nice. And Leslie says, I'm listening to the bookshop book right now. Oh my gosh, how cool. That's awesome. It's very cozy. It's very cozy. I like it. And that was lovely. I know, free tote. We gotta love it. It's cute. Yeah, it's nice art. And I love a good tote. <laughs> Thank you. Glad you had a nice trip. Yes, and met lovely people. So you'll hear all about that in the future. And I haven't done a single banner because I've been too excited and too worried about my nephews coming up behind me. So if you're new here and you enjoyed the Eclectic Book Haul, subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you again soon for more exciting author and booktube content. Um, next up will be Wednesday with Natasha Pulley and thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you again soon. It's been lovely. <laughs> thanks guys.